Kayla and welcome back to my channel. Today we are here with the March uh, TBR list. So these are the 10 books that I am planning on reading in March. Um, I did succeed in my February TBR and that'll be linked below if you want to go back and look at that. I did succeed. I read all 10 of those books, 11. Um, there was an additional 11th one added there and I succeeded. I read them all and I really enjoyed them all. So now it's time to see the just 10 this month. There's not a bonus 11 this month. Um, but the 10 books that I would like to read in the month of March. So we're going to start off with this gem right here. This is The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. It is the second Bridgerton um, novel. It is the novel that the second season of Bridgerton is going to be based off of. It's about Anthony. Um, and I'm really excited to read this. I finally got my hands on it. It's been like impossible to get and I almost just gave up and bought the ebook, but I wanted a physical copy in my hands because I like physical books a lot better than ebooks. So, um, yes, that is The Viscount Who Loves Me. Um, up next we have Something to Talk About by, uh, Meryl Wilsner. I picked this one up months ago at Barnes & Noble, um, because I liked the cover and the description, and so I'm finally going to get around to reading it. So let's hear about it. A showrunner and her assistant give the world something to talk about when they accidentally fuel a ridiculous rumor in this debut romance. So it's fake it till you make it romance. Yes. Um, Hollywood powerhouse Joe is photographed making her assistant Emma laugh on a red carpet, and just like that, the tabloids declare them a couple. The so-called scandal couldn't come at a worse time, threatening Emma's promotion and Joe's new movie. As gossip spreads, it starts to affect all areas of their lives. Paparazzi are following them outside the office, co-workers are treating them differently, and a source is feeding information to the media. But their only comment is no comment. With the launch of Joe's film project fast approaching, the two women begin to spend even more time together, getting along famously. Emma seems to have a sixth sense for knowing what Joe needs, and Joe, known for being aloof and outwardly cold, opens up to Emma in a way neither of them expects. They begin to realize the rumor may not be so off base at all, but is acting on the spark between them worth fanning the gossip flames? So that is something to talk about. I love a good fake it till you make it romance, so this should be good. Um, next, we've got Crush by Tracy Wolf. This is the sequel to Crave, so I'm not going to read the description, obviously, because it's a sequel. Um, but I read Crave like a week ago, and it was very slow to start. I almost DNF'd it, um, and I'm glad I didn't because it got really good at the end. Um, I was a little frustrated by the fact, and I talked about it in the read with Kayla from last week, um, that we got like 300 pages in, and the main character still didn't know that there were supernatural creatures at her school, and I was like, excuse me how does she still not know like we're we've been here for so long um so it had way too much exposition for me but the ending was so good that I am so excited to read um Crush so that is on this month's TBR um I just have to talk about these two together so next on the list we have um both by Lee Bardugo we have um Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows so the reason these have to go together is because the Shadow and Bone TV show comes out in April, but the TV show is apparently like a mix of these universes. Um, like these characters are all in the series, but it's this series, but it has these characters. Um, so I'm very confused by what's going to happen in the TV series. So I'm going to read both of these. This is a trilogy. This is a duology. I believe I just have the first ones right now because I wanted to read them first. Um, I've been talking to some of my friends about it and they say that I'm going to like Six of Crows much better than Shadow and Bone. I'm going to give them both a chance. We'll see. Um, but let's read about these. So Shadow and Bone, which is the actual TV series. Soldier, Summoner, Saint. Orphan and expendable, Alita Starkov is a soldier who knows she may not survive her first trek across the Shadowfold, a swath of unnatural darkness crawling with monsters. But when her regiment is attacked, Alina unleashes a dormant magic not even she knew she possessed. Now Alina will enter a lavish world of royalty and intrigue as she trains with the Grisha, her country's magical military elite, and falls under the spell of their notorious leader, the Darkling. He believes Alina can summon a force capable of destroying the Shadowfold and uniting their war-ravaged country, but only if she can master her untamed gift. 
As the threat to the kingdom mounts and Alina unlocks the secrets of her past, she will make a dangerous discovery that could threaten all she loves and the very future of her nation. So that is Shadow and Bone. And then Six of Crows. <laughs> um, Ketterdam, a bustling hub of international trade where anything can be had for the right price. And no one knows that better than criminal prodigy Kaz Brecker. Kaz is offered the chance at a deadly heist that can make him rich beyond his wildest dreams, but he can't pull it off alone. A convict with a thirst for revenge, a sharp suit shooter who can't walk away from a wager, a runaway with a privileged past, a spy known as the Wraith, a heart trender using her magic to survive the slums, a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes. Kaz's crew are the only ones who might stand, a ch stand between the world and destruction if they don't kill each other first. So, that is Shadow Bone and Six of Crows, Deadly Bardugo, Netflix series coming in April, so I'm going to try and get through um, at least these two books. Um, so yes, I'm, very, I'm still very confused about how this TV show is happening, um, but I think I'll be less confused after I read the books. Please help, please let me be less confused after I read the books. Um, next up, we have An Ember in the Ashes by uh, Saba Tahir. Uh, this series has been out for a while. When did this first one come out? Let's see. This first one came out in 2015 while I was in college. I didn't do a lot of reading in college other than for college. Let's be real. Um, so, I never in the ashes. I've heard great things about this series, so I'm really excited to start it. Let's read about it. Um, Leia is a slave. Elias is a soldier. Neither is free. Under the Martial Empire, defiance is met with death. Leia and her family do not challenge the Empire. They've seen what happens to those who do. But when Leia's brother is arrested for treason, she is forced to make a decision. In exchange for help from the rebels who promised to rescue her brother, she will risk her life to spy from them, for them from, the, from within the Empire's greatest military academy. There Leia meets Elias, the school's finest soldier, and secretly, it's most unwilling. He and Leia will soon realize that their destinies are intertwined and that their choices will change the fate of the Empire itself. So that is an uh, Ember in the Ashes. I'm very excited to read that. Okay, next up we have Wings of Ebony by JL. Um, this book, I think, just came out, like, last month. Um, and I've seen a lot about it on social media. Um, the back is full of authors that I know who enjoyed it, so that's good. Um, but I want to say, and I'll read the summary, I want to say this is the one that, like, actually takes place in, like, Texas, but it's a fantasy book. Um, so I'm very excited to read that. <laughs> um, okay. Rue's family is her whole life. Her sister Tasha, moms, and the play aunties and cousins who live in the East Row, the Houston neighborhood she calls home, yes, Texas, I was right, um, are her world. But it is upended when the unthinkable happens. Moms is murdered and Rue is snatched away by a father who abandoned her at birth. A father who now insists she follow him into his home, Gizan, in a secret con the secret country of gods who wield a powerful magic. In Gizan, Rue's existence is a crime. There's never been a half-god, half-human there where leaders protect their magical powers at all costs and thrive on human suffering. Miserable and def desperate to see her sister on the anniversary of their mother's death, Rue breaks Gazan's most sacred law. She returns to Houston only to discover that black kids are being forced into crime and violence and that Tasha is in danger of falling sway to the very forces that claim their mother's life. Worse still, evidence mounts that the evil plaguing the East Row is the same one that lurks in Gazan, an evil that will stop at nothing until it has stolen everything from her. Rue must embrace her true identity and wield the full magnitude of her ancestors' power to save her hood before the gods burn it to the ground. But how can she pull that off when the enemy is everywhere? So I'm really excited about this because it has, like, a fantasy world element but also, like, real world element. So I think it will be very good. Also, this cover is just stunning. Um, so that is uh, Wings of Ebony. Next up, we've got um, Circe by Madeline Miller. Um, I read Song of Achilles last month. It was okay. It wasn't my favorite thing I've read, but I enjoyed it. Um, but you know me, I am a myth and history nerd, so I'm very excited to read this. Um, so this is about um, Cersei, obviously. And I think I've read the thing before in a TBR video, but I'll read it again. In the house of Helios, god of the sun, and the mightiest of the titans, a daughter is born. But Cersei is a strange child, not powerful like her father, nor viciously alluring like her mother. Turning to the world of mortals for companionship, she discovers that she does possess power, the power of witchcraft, which can transform rivals into monsters and menace the gods themselves. Threatened, Zeus banishes Circe to a deserted island where she hones her occult craft and crosses paths with many of the most famous figures in all of mythology, including the Minotaur, Daedalus, and his doomed son, Icarus, 
the murderous Medea, and of course, the of course, wily Odysseus. But there is danger too. For a woman who stands alone, and Circe... Oh, there's... Sorry. Commas are hard. <laughs> but there is danger too for a woman who stands alone, and Circe unwittingly draws the wrath of both men and gods, ultimately finding herself pitted against one of the most terrifying and vengeful of the Olympians. To protect what she holds dear, Circe must summon her strength and choose once and for all whether she belongs with the gods she is born from or the mortals she has come to love. So, I'm very excited to read that. Um... I guess we'll stick on the mythology train and next up is lore by Alexander Bracken. Now I've heard mixed things about this. Um, I've heard some people who absolutely adore it and some people who think it is not well developed enough so I'm excited to build my own opinion on this. Um, the back says you may deny the fates but they will not deny you. Fighting them will not save you from what is ahead. Every seven years the Aegon begins. As punishment for past rebellion, nine Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals. They are hunted by the descendants of ancient bloodlines, all eager to kill a god and seize their divine power and immortality. Long ago, Lord Perseus fled that beautiful world, turning her back on the hunt's promise of eternal glory after her family was murdered by a rival line. For years, she's pushed away any thoughts of revenge against the man, now a god, responsible for their deaths. Um... Yet as the hunt dawns over New York City, two participants seek her out. Castor, a childhood friend, Lore believed dead, and Athena, one of the original gods, the last of the original gods, now gravely wounded. The goddess offers Lore an alliance against their mutual enemy um, in a way to leave the Aegon behind forever. But Lore's decision to rejoin the hunt, binding her fate to Athena's, will come at a deadly cost. And it may not be enough to stop the rise of a new god with the power to bring humanity to its knees. Um, so I'm excited about this. Is it in backwards? No, the map is just upside down. That's weird. The map is upside down. Is it supposed to be or is my book defective? No, it's this side it's right side up, so I think it's just that my map is defective. Weird. Interesting. Anyway, that is lore. I've been really excited to read this one. This is one when I um, heard about it for the first time. I was very excited to get and read, so I hope that I enjoy it. Um, but I will say I have read a lot of mixed reviews about this one, so we will see. Um, and last on the list, we have um, Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan. Kevin Kwan is the author of the Crazy Rich Asian series, of which I still have not actually finished, I don't think. I think I still have one left. Um, but I'm really excited to read this one, so let's read about it. <laughs> Um, on her very first morning on the jewel-like island of Capri, Lucy Churchill sets eyes on George Zhao, and she instantly can't stand him. Great. Love that. Uh, she can't stand it when he gallantly offers to trade hotel rooms with her so she can have a view of the sea. She can't stand that he knows more about Casa Malaparte than she does. And she really can't stand it when he kisses her in the darkness of the ancient ruins of a Roman villa, and they're caught by her snobbish, disappointing cousin Charlotte. <laughs> Love this. Your mother is Chinese, so it's no surprise you'd be attracted to someone like him, Charlotte teases. The daughter of an American-born Chinese mother and a blue-blooded New York father, Lucy has always been sublimated, has always sublimated the Asian side of herself in favor of the white side, and she adamantly denies having feelings for George. But several years later, when George unexpectedly appears in East Hampton, where Lucy is weekending with her new fiancé, she finds herself drawn to George again. Soon, Lucy is spinning a web of deceit that involves her family, her fiancé, the co-op board of her Fifth Avenue apartment building, and ultimately herself, as she tries to mightily to deny George entry into her world and her heart. Moving among summer playgrounds of privilege, peppered with decadent food and extravagant fashion, Sex and Vanity is truly a modern love story, a daring homage to A Room with a View, and a brilliantly funny comedy of manners set between two cultures. So that is Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan. So, there you have it my March TBR, um, 10 books, 10 books I'm really excited about, so I think that that's gonna make it as successful as February, so we'll see, um, but yes, yeah, so, if you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up, leave a comment below about a book that's on your March TBR, make sure you hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos, and I'll talk to you in the next one, bye!